Well, here's a guy that certainly uh, enjoys people that uh, have some some talent and uh, some some height and some defensive ability. Uh, the outstanding head coach of the Portland Trail Blazers. As we uh, move on with our uh, program, and uh, we're off to a flying start. First, we get Romaro Gill, and now we have an opportunity to talk to one of the NBA's finest head coaches. Terry Stotts is uh, going to be joining us. Coach, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Doing terrific. I know if this were a normal year, you'd be uh, in the middle of training camp, probably played a preseason game or two, getting ready for the start of a regular season. We know that this hasn't been a normal year. Uh, tell us, first of all, uh, what your best memories were of life in the bubble, as you remember it. Well, probably the best experience was the – it was the totality of what we did as a team. You know, I don't, you know, Damien had an outstanding run, obviously. Uh, but I think what we did in those, uh, in the eight playing games and then uh, playing Memphis in the seeding game uh, to get in, uh, that the totality of those nine games, how we did it, how we came together, uh, that was the overriding memory of the bubble. You know, the, it was a great experience. I told the team at the beginning when we when we went into it that obviously we we were playing for something, but to be part of the bubble to me was important beyond basketball. Uh, you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic, and to be able to pull that off uh, and do it successfully, it meant something to the NBA, and honestly, I think it meant something to to the country that we were able to do something in the middle of a pandemic. But personally. Uh, when we uh, when we clinched another playoff spot, our seventh straight year in the playoffs, that was the culmination of a of a of a however long five weeks to get to that point, and it was uh, that was the moment when when we clinched a playoff spot. Terry, was it was this the hardest time and the hardest season to coach because of COVID, because of the bubble, because of just where you know society is right now socially, the social issues? Was it? Not so much on the court, but just off the court. Just that, how how challenging was it to deal with it here? Well, it was challenging in a different way. Um, you know, the bubble was such a unique experience. Uh, our backs were against the wall. You know, the teams, the twenty two teams that were in Orlando, fifteen of them basically had playoff spots guaranteed. Um, you know, it was it was the other teams in the West trying. So I think every team's approach in the bubble was different, but uh, it was, it was challenging in a different way. To be honest, uh, up until March 11th, when the season was postponed, that was challenging. We were having a difficult season uh, and that would be an understatement. We weren't, uh, we weren't getting the wins. Uh, we lost a lot of games. We probably sh felt we should have won. Uh, we weren't playing the way we wanted to play and we weren't in the position that we wanted to be in. So uh, leading up to March 11th was very challenging. Getting to getting to the uh, bubble and knowing what was in front of us, to me, it was in some ways, it was it was a little easier because every the goal was right there. It was a short it was a sprint. Everybody knew what the goal was. Everybody knew what we had to do. We knew that we had to go six and six and two at minimum to have a shot to be in the playoffs. So when everybody, it basically was the playoffs, you know, and when you're in playoff mode and everybody's on the same page and, and the goal is there, that makes the job as a coach that uh, a little bit easier. When playing the bubble uh, was over, some of the initial discussion was that uh, next season might not start until January, potentially February. Now, as we understand it in the last couple of days, there've been some, preliminary discussions uh, amongst at least the NBA owners that uh, there might be a goal to get started again on Christmas Day, potentially have a 72-game season, uh, maybe have some other things that would incorporate some of the different rules of uh, uh, the bubble experience, uh, maybe not, uh, but it sounds like maybe the season begins with uh, no fans in the stands again, and uh, I'm, I'm sure there's still a lot to be decided, but uh, are you kind of in uh, just uh, a standby mode that when they tell you that uh, it's, it's, it's time to go back to work and start to planning again. I mean, it, it's, it's got to be even right now a very different off season than you've been used to having in the past because you don't necessarily know how to ramp up uh, for the start of next season, not knowing exactly when that's going to be. Well, you're right. I think the, the off season right now is, uh, you know, is, one is it's obviously not your typical off season where you might do some traveling and, and get out. It's uh, you know, it's not uh, a usual 
life for anybody in the country, in the world. So uh, that goes without saying. You know, as far as, uh, you know, what you're talking about, I I think that was news to me. You know, when that came out, uh, you probably read it even before I even heard about it. So that's all news to me. It's, uh, I think the, the mindset that we have to have as players and coaches is um, you got to be ready. And I think one of the things that our players did a really good job was before the bubble was they stayed ready. They stayed in shape. Uh, we didn't know what was going to happen. We didn't know how the season was going to play out, and, but they stayed ready. And so I think there's no question we are going to have a season next year. We don't know when it's going to start. We don't know when training camp's going to start. I think there's still a lot of, a lot of questions that need to be answered. So I, it's premature for me to, to comment on, on any of that. But, uh, you know, it's, I'll say this is that uh, we're going to have to be ready to go at some point, and and we will be. All right, Terry. Now I'm going to do the disclaimer before I get to the actual question, all right? All right. I'm lifelong – I live in Seattle. I'm a lifelong Sonics fan, my favorite team of all time. No one will ever top that team. I was – my heyday was the 90s, all right? That was, that was my team. All right. I've never – I was there in the Super Bowl when we lost – on the on the one yard line, right when when Russell Wilson threw the interception, but I've never cried like I've ever cried in my entire sports life. You know when when it happened when I was 18 years old in my parents' living room on the floor, watching that 1994 team lose in the first round of the Denver Nuggets. Now I bring I bring this up not to let's we're going to talk about that, but it comes full circle. There was another moment where I got emotional was last year. And I'm wondering if in Portland you guys felt this at all. When Damian hit the shot against Oklahoma City and he waved goodbye, did you guys ever get a sense of people in Seattle? It felt like up here that people in Seattle were more happy about the win than actually people in Portland. Because I don't know, it felt like we were bearing that team finally. And, and I'm just wondering, did, did you hear from people that were associated with the Sonics in Seattle? And, I mean, I think in up here, we want to uh, erect a statue for Damian Lillard, even though he's never been a member of the Sonics. But did you get any sense of that? Could you feel that at all? Uh, you know, not really, uh, to be perfectly honest. I know that uh, it it runs deep uh, with Oklahoma City and Seattle and the Sonics and Thunder. And I, under, and I certainly understand that. Uh, being in Seattle in the 90s, uh, you're right. It was the heyday uh, for me as well. It was it was, I was a young coach and coming into a situation where we're averaging 60 wins a year and uh, we win four division championships. And, uh, you know, I just thought, Hey, this NBA is great. This is uh, just, you know, uh, unfortunately I did, I did find out what the other side uh, was like later on in my career, but um, I, I'll be honest. I did. I didn't know. I think it was more, if that were true, Seattle, obviously the Seattle fans were rooting not for Portland, but probably against Oklahoma City. And I can probably understand that as well. But, no, when Damian hit the shot, oh. uh, I have to admit, Seattle was not in the back of my mind. Uh, well, you know, it's just there's the connection of, like, you know, Brian's worked in Seattle. Yeah, you know, then we got Calabro, who, you know, was on the calls but with the Seattle connection. I It just felt – it felt like we fi we finally kind of buried that in a way, too. Well, I hope, I hope you did. I hope it was cathartic. Uh, for a lot of people, um, and I understand it. And if if that was is that was one of the side benefits, uh, I was glad they hit the shot. And we won the series. But but if a side benefit was that uh, it helped you move on, that's great. Yeah, I, I, I will say I was in the building uh, the day that unfortunately uh, the Kevin Matumbo ended the uh, end of the game on his uh, back, you know, holding the holding the basketball above his head. And uh, I will say, our, our, our mutual friend uh, to us all, Kevin Calabro, never bought more, uh, generous to a fault at all times, but never bought more drinks than he did that day as we all drowned our sorrows at a couple of couple of places in, in, in Lake Union after, after I mean, it was, it was, we all just were so incredulous that that, that had happened. And uh, Blazer fans certainly will, will be with me on the Game 7 loss to the Lakers in 2000, but those were the two most painful basketball defeats that I had been uh, been in person to witness. And so, um, so fortunately there's been some very good moments like Damien shot to kind of take some of the sting out of, out of those moments. But, uh, uh, but sometimes you, you tend to remember the bad, bad ones sometimes more than the good ones, which is, 
not the way we should do it. But uh, I did want to ask you, because before the days of COVID, uh, you and your lovely wife, Jan, were very big travelers, and you would kind of pick a new place every summer to uh, experience. And so I know that you have been to many places in this world of ours. Um, Jamaica, have you have you ever been to Jamaica? Do you have any thoughts of, of Jamaica? And uh, do you have any, um, any thoughts as to what kind of a country it could, it could possibly be as a uh, basketball home to a to a team in the Olympics, uh, hopefully in a couple of years. Uh, well, to answer your first question, I have not been to Jamaica. We have not been to Jamaica. We did a, a cruise, a Caribbean cruise, back in uh, in the mid '90s, uh, and uh, stopped at a few islands. But we have not made it to Jamaica. So, um, uh, you know, obviously. It uh, has a great reputation. I'd love to be there sometime, but we haven't been able to enjoy that yet. Uh, as far as Jamaica basketball, you know, with Rick Turner in charge, you know, I think that would be that I'd really be happy for him. I I really can't speak to uh, what Jamaica has uh, in the terms of basketball, but you know, everybody knows the Jamaican bobsled team made it, so you know, the, the basketball team can make it too, right? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, and as I understand it from what you told me. Um, uh, Coach Turner has done, and I don't pup. You may be, you may, you may tell me that uh, you're different than I, but uh, uh, Coach Coach uh, Turner apparently presented Coach Stotts with a, a Jamaican basketball T-shirt uh, at one point when he attended a Blazer practice, uh, you know, a while ago. I don't believe I have a Jamaican basketball T-shirt, so that might be something that we need to rectify for our participation in the program today. But uh, but I'm sure you still have that shirt probably, Coach, if I know you. I do, and I'm I, I'm very remiss in that I'm not wearing it right now. I um, okay. I jumped on I jumped on this call late, and uh, I should have I should have been sporting my T-shirt. But yeah, Rick Rick came to uh, our practice here in Portland. Uh, we got a shirt; it's green uh, with some black lettering, and it, it's a very it's a nice looking T-shirt. I should have worn it for the call. Hey, hey, Terry, I got a quick question. Go, you know, go back to the Sonic days. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but but I'm pretty sure I have my dates right. At one point, it's on the same staff, right? So it's George, the coach, and then you and Dwayne, assistant coaches. I don't know if I'm missing. You never – you were gone by the time Nate became an assistant there, right? One year removed? Right. When, uh, when Dwayne and I, Tim Gergerich and Bob Weiss – um, were the were the assistant coaches, and uh, that was the staff that went to the finals. Uh, when George, when George left, I left. Uh, Dwayne stayed on, and uh, Westfall was the coach, and he brought in, uh, and Nate became an assistant right after that. What was what was that when it was you and Dwayne and Gergerich? What what was that? What were those those meetings like? What was when you guys were sitting around know, after a game, before a game, just? Just talking basketball. I mean, that, that is a. I mean, that's a great collection of basketball minds. I mean, you have a guy in George Carl who, um, you know, is a Hall of Fame coach. You yourself, who multiple you know seasons of winning in the playoffs. Dwayne the same way, a very good coach. Uh, what were those? What were those meetings like? Well, first of all, uh, Coach Gerg didn't like meetings, so <laughs> <laughs> so he didn't. He didn't go to a lot of meetings, um, but you know, Dwayne and I were the young coaches. Bob Weiss was an experienced head coach. Uh, obviously, George George's uh, credentials speak for themselves. So, uh, in retrospect, it was a it was extremely good staff. I think uh, we uh, obviously George led it uh, and ran it the way he wanted to, and we would in give input, but. I think that Dwayne and I were young guys and we were just probably absorbing more information than we were giving. But uh, I thought we did a good job of working with players, having relationship with the players on the court. Um, George was a great uh, game strategist, uh, game planner, uh, and obviously we had talented players. So, um, you know, it's, what's interesting is we had so much success winning games. Uh, it's, it, I'm almost incredulous now when I go back and think of our worst seasons was winning 57 games. Uh, and when we won 57, uh, those two years that we won only 57 games were trying seasons. So that's, uh, that's a little bit hard for me to comprehend right now. <laughs> and, then, and then you and uh, Coach Casey get reunited uh, in Dallas and end up being a part of uh, Rick Carlisle's staff and a team that goes on to win 
a, a world championship in uh, 2011. Um, I, I'm guess I'm guessing you know all the work and all the all the time you put in uh, practices, games, uh, uh, meetings, and so forth. Uh, they they somehow all get to feel I'm sure uh, very rewarding and worth it when you get a chance to be a part of a world championship operation as you did that particular season. Well, it does. Uh, you know, in much the same way, going to the finals in 96 with Seattle, um, those seasons are probably most enjoyable in retrospect. As you're going through a successful playoff run, you're just getting re ready for the next game. And, and you win that series and you can enjoy it for the moment. Damien hits a shot. You enjoy the moment. The next day, you're getting ready for the next series. And same thing, you're, you're just going one after another. And then the real enjoyment, obviously, is the culmination. In Seattle, it was beating Utah in Game Seven in the Conference Finals. That was that was an extraordinary moment. And for for me in Dallas, and for Dwayne and I in Dallas to win a championship on the road in Miami, that moment. But I think what I enjoy even more about uh, those two teams, Seattle '96 and, and Dallas in '11, is looking back and how many people remember those series, they remember those teams, how they viewed those teams in different lights, um, uh, the admiration that people had for those two teams. I think that's what I enjoy most about it. There was, uh, you know, those, those were great. What was, what, what, what's in the water, do you think, Terry, in Oakland, that produces guys like Damian Lillard, Gary Payton, Jason Kidd, you know, I'm leaving out guys. But those guys in particular, you know, another Seattle icon up here will be Marshawn Lynch in a different sport. But, but well, what, throw, what, throw, him, throw him, if you go back, throw him Bill Russell too. Yeah, I mean, what, what is it? What is it about that area and, and that type of player that comes out of it? You know, I don't know. I, I'm very fortunate to have been with all three of those point guards. Uh, arguably, uh, you know, all three of them will be Hall of Fame well, two of them already are in the Hall of Fame, but uh, the, the I think the common thread between Dame and Gary and Jason is that all three of them are just ultimate competitors. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, uh, I don't know what it is about Oakland, uh, but uh, they're tough-minded, they're tough-willed, uh, extremely competitive, uh, and. They, they they don't back down. All three of those guys. Now they all have different personalities, but running through them is is that is that spirit. Yeah. No head coach other than Terry Stotts has taken a Trailblazer team to seven consecutive postseason appearances. That uh, says a lot right there, considering some pretty uh, strong head coaches in the Blazers uh, franchise history. Uh, last question for you, Coach. Uh, you look at uh, I know the great support that uh, you've enjoyed in Portland. And I'm sure you've thought about this, uh, what it would be like to win a world championship in, in Portland and uh, to have the Blazers win a second ever world title. It seems like something that uh, uh, the city has uh, been hoping for and, and, um, and, and, and looking uh, with anticipation to enjoy again. And uh, I know you're, you're already a hero for what you've done to be a part of Blazer excitement to this point in time. But uh, have you thought much about what it would be like to be part of the ultimate experience, winning another world championship for yourself and doing it here in Portland? Well, I, I know that uh, to do it here in Portland would be um, an unbelievable experience. And that's the goal. You know, when we went to the conference finals last season, uh, that was the goal coming in this year. And I, I think our mindset is that obviously we had a we had a flat year this year, but the goal of winning a championship in Portland um, you know, one of the things I love, and I know Brian, you you uh, you keep up with the things that uh, Damian says, is that he wants to win a championship here in Portland, and because he knows how much it mean to him and how much it mean to the city and the fans to win it here in Portland. And uh, I think the the enthusiasm would be unrivaled. Uh, you know, obviously every city is thrilled when their team can win a championship, but to do it here in Portland uh, would be incredibly special. Coach, thanks so much for taking some time out of uh, out of what's uh, a downtime, uh, rare downtime moments for you 
and uh, especially on a Friday night that you could be doing a lot more fun things with uh, with Jan. But I appreciate the fact that you took some time out. To <laughs> what? We can't leave the house. What are you talking about? <laughs> <Get new people. laughs> we should have brought Sorry. her on just to give her something to do, too. But, <laughs> but we still appreciate the fact that you joined us on uh, what we hope is going to be a historic uh, broadcast this uh this, uh, uh, this 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 desire to raise awareness to uh, to bring Olympic basketball uh, to Jamaica, uh, and so I think it's something that uh, uh, we're going to be talking about. We already have for quite a few hours. We're going to be doing it for a few hours more. But uh, so happy that you could be a part of it. Well, all my best to uh, Coach Rick Turner. Uh, he's you know we go back to the Seattle days, uh, and all the my best best of luck to Jamaica basketball. I, I wish him the best. Coach, thank you again, and uh, hopefully we'll talk to you again real soon. All right. Thanks, guys.